Good morning, everyone, and welcome to CTL's Education Professional Development Series. My name is Amy Alcalisi, EdTech Project Manager here at CTL, and I'm joined by Stephanie Shea, a Marketing Manager. For those of you who are not familiar with CTO, we are headquartered in Portland, Oregon, and have been providing innovative IT solutions to education and government customers for over 26 years. We are a Google for Education partner, and some of our most popular products include our brands of ruggedized CTL and to PC laptops, convertibles, two-in-ones, and tablets designed specifically for K-12 education. Over the last two and a half years, we've worked with Google to introduce a line of CTL Chromebooks that have been recommended by PC Magazine as the best choice for Chromebooks in education. As part of our commitment to education, CTL is offering monthly professional development webinars for our education customers. These webinars will include a variety of topics relevant to K-12 EdTech, but will have a big focus on Google Apps for Education and Chromebooks in the classroom. Today's webinar is an introduction to NC Lab, presented by Sheila Crawford Bunch, Director of Education at NC Lab. However, before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. We've taken a screenshot of an example of the attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your own computer desktop in the upper right hand corner. You're listening in using your computer's speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be, will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the question pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the question and answer session at the end of today's presentation. If we run out of time, you will be contacted by your sales representative to make sure all your questions are answered. But before we begin, I'd like to take a real quick poll to learn more about our attendees today. Please indicate if you've ever used NC Lab. So let me launch this and we'll get some information. Should be up on your screen now. No experience, some experience, a lot of experience, or you are an expert. All right, I'll give about five more seconds. Right. So it looks like all of our attendees don't have any experience. So that will help our presenters. Thank you for sharing that information with us. All right, moving forward. Before I turn it over to Sheila for our presentation, I would just like to remind everyone about some resources for Nevada 21 educators. When you visit the nr21.ctl.net website, you can learn more about upcoming professional learning opportunities. Sign up for our updates about upcoming events and information and join our Google Plus community for Nevada Ready 21 educators. I would now like to introduce Sheila Crawford Bunch, Director of Education at NC Lab. Sheila is a teacher a ded dedicated to bringing STEM, including coding and 3D modeling, to all students. She has worked in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics for over 30 years before becoming an educator. She supports teachers and develops essential resources just as lesson plans, course mappings, and alignments with common core standards and NGSS. Sheila will now take you through an introduction through NC Lab. So at this point, I will transfer my screen here over to our presenter. Oops. Sorry about that, guys. Hello, everybody. My name is Sheila Bunch, and I am the Director of Education for NC Lab. Um, I became involved with them as a teacher. I brought my students to uh, their workshops 
In fact, on the screenshot, you can see me pondering one of the screens next to the student. I became very excited about their product because what I saw was that they were teaching some very fundamental skills to students and in, in a very engaging way. Um, all these kids that you see on the screen, it was difficult for us to pry them loose from their screens to eat pizza. So that gives you an idea of uh, how much they took to the programs. I'm not going to show this video today, but if you run this again, the, the address, the YouTube address is there if you would like to see the presentation on your own. The purpose of today's webinar is that we're going to show you how they're these courses are an easy way to get your students started in the world of computer programming and 3D modeling. We'll show you how to log on to and navigate the desktop and introduce you to the courses themselves and tools available to you and your students on the NR21 Chromebook. Hey, the nice thing about these classes is that you don't need to be an expert. And this is important because um, Classroom teachers don't generally have a background in programming. Uh, the courses themselves are, are very gently paced so that each, the concepts are built in small steps. And we provide you with uh, materials uh, that will make you an expert. But also the courses have built in tools that assist the students on their own. Every time a student submits their work, it's instantly evaluated and either they'll receive error messages and hints if their code didn't run properly, or they are passed on to the next level with a summary of what they've learned. You also have a great learning management system. This has been developed by NC Lab, and I'll show you that in a little bit. It drills right down to whatever level a student has completed and what they actually did, how much time they spent on it. It also provides you with lesson plans, pacing guides, so if you do want to set this up as a semester class, you can. There are student journals, which can be used offline. That I've personally found as a teacher that um, one of the important things to do is to slow the kids down a little bit and have them reflect on what they've learned so that they're not just button mashing their way to an electronic course. And of course, you have answer keys so that you know what the code should look like um, and uh, that gives you a chance to check out your student's code and see how it compares, given that there's more than one way to solve a problem. You, uh, the benefits of the program is that there are instructional videos built into the courses. They are YouTube videos, so you want to make sure that your school allows access to them. You might have to talk to your system administrator to uh, turn them on if it's not. The code itself is scaffolded, so a lot of times most of the code is written and only the part that the students need to learn, is, is that's the part that they fill in themselves. And then the third level of support within the program is that every oh, three or four levels there's what we call a step through demonstration level where the students will click through the model of the code step by step so that they can see how it meant to run. If you have an R21 Chromebook, it will include a, a license for that Chromebook for the self-paced courses, and there are three of them right now, Carol Jr., Carol Tina, and 3D Modeling. We're revising a full Python uh, course to be added. Uh, on the computer itself, there's a desktop icon. I'll show you that in a minute. And they can use Google Sign-in for easy access. Uh, the courses and everything are stored in the cloud. That includes a place to store student files so that they can take their laptop anywhere and work on the courses anytime. And I think that one of the coolest things is that there's free tools. They can create their own games, their own designs, models. There's all kinds of tools they can use that are, are free. OK, so this is what it looks like. You'll see this icon over here. So on the Chromebook, all they have to do is click on that. It'll take them to the desktop. It also, if you go on um, 
ncLab.com, the main company webpage. You'll see up here in the corner a blue login box, and that will also bring up the desktop screen. So this is what the desktop screen looks like. Again, you can log on with a Google ID, just click on the multicolored G, or it can be also accessed with an email address and a password. Um, yes, yeah, so normally you think you should not be, have to use the, the username and password. That will be built into the NR21 laptop. If you do have trouble logging in, make sure that you contact us either by the support email or by phone, and we'll make sure you're set up properly. This is what the desktop looks like when you open up the login screen. It comes with four buttons. This is the teacher view. Students won't see my students. This is for you. And on the my student button, what you get is our in-house built learning management system. And we'll take a look at that a little bit closer here in a moment. Then the courses button will take you to all the courses that are available, including Carol Jr., Turtle Tina, and 3D modeling. The creative suite is where all the free tools are, and this is where your students will build their projects, which can be used as an assessment. And uh, the My Files will take you to a cloud-based folder where you can keep your your own files, including any programs that are designed. So let's take a look at the courses. The first one is Carol Jr. Carol Jr. is based on Python programming language, but it's been simplified. One of the problems that uh, kids have when they first learn programming is that it's very fussy about syntax. You have to have exact punctuation, exact parentheses, things like that in order for it to run. And that can be a bit of a barrier when you're first learning how to program. So Car what Carol Jr. has done is it's taken that language and really simplified it. Um, and it, it really takes the kids through step by step on all the fundamentals of programming. The, the course consists of five parts. Each part is divided into five sections. And each section is divided into seven levels. And if you want to do the math for that, you get 175 levels worth of learning to take you through to the end. What the screen looks like, there's a screenshot here that shows you what the kids will see. On the upper left-hand corner over here, oops, sorry. On the upper left-hand corner are instructions and an example of what to expect once they, their program has run. On the bottom is the box where they type in their code. And then on the right, they can run it and see what the little robot Carol actually does, including crashing into walls if they don't get their directions straight. On the bottom, you'll see uh, different control buttons here. The green button runs the program in its entirety. The black button will step through it one step at a time. So if they have an error and they want to see where it crops up, this is a neat button to press because it will take it through a little more slowly. There are uh, sizes here, so they can make this box a little more readable by pressing the A. The green arrows erase the code. And there's also a language select, so that this will run, the code will run in, in one of many different languages, including English. This button over here resets the screen, and then the arrow will take you to the next screen. And there's some help settings at the top. You can uh, toggle these to improve readability and so forth. So that's a little bit about Carol. Um, it teaches basic mover commands at the beginning, then gets into repeat loops nested loops, conditional loops, then gets into variables and functions, and so forth. So they really develop a very strong basis in programming. The next course is Turtle Tina. Uh, some of you may have used Logo in the past. It's similar. Uh, this is, again, based on Python. 
This time they're using the full syntax. So that's why it's a good idea for them to learn Carol Jr. first to get used to the skills. And then with Tina, they're using the full syntax. What they are doing in this is they're starting to learn how to um, draw figures that will provide a basis for 3D uh, design down the road. It, it's a lovely program to, that will work very well when you're teaching geometry. You can rotate these images. You can experiment with the code to see what changes the images. And I think it's an excellent uh, companion to any geometry course, especially when you start um, working with x, y axes and um, figures that show up in all four quadrants. So it starts with, again, with the basic commands, loops and nested loops. And then the second part of the course continues with variables and functions. And they do get to make three three-dimensional three images in two different ways. One is if you make a two-dimensional image, you can extrude it, but there's an extrude command that will produce the third dimension. And um, it will print it out on a 3D printer. You can export it as a 3D printable file, an STL file, and it will print it out. So you can make beautiful medallions and things like that. Once you get into the latter part of Tina 2, they're actually working with rotational surfaces. So they, they take the image and they actually, it's almost like a, a cutout, like you would, like a, a paper doll, a cutout. And then what it does is it rotates it about the y-axis and that gives you um, an extension into the z-plane or uh, three-dimensional object. So it goes as far as re rotational surfaces, shells, and solids. Okay, and that brings us to, to 3D modeling. This actually teaches the students how to build true 3D models. And by this point, they should be fairly expert programmers. And you can see some examples here. This is from the nclab.com website. There are galleries. These are models that were, have been produced by students who have taken this course. Um, I found with my students, they absolutely fell in love with this. They would race through their math lessons in order to go on to NC Lab and make 3D stuff. So it's very popular uh, with students. Uh, the nice thing about these is if you click on one of these images, it will pull up the actual code that the student has written to create that image. So this is a fun site for the kids as well. If they go to the NC Lab public site and click on one of these, they'll see what other people have done to create this. It acts as another learning tool. One thing we're working on right now, and this will be available shortly, is our design competitions. These will be weekly. We're going to start with the 3D design course, but we should have competitions in all the courses. And students can submit their design, and we will feature them on the NC Lab web page. And of course, this is a familiar figure to a lot of students. Uh, what they like to do, of course, is build their favorite thing, uh, usually from the game. Uh, that's often a starting point for them. The screen does rotate. This is just a screenshot. But if you go to this on the website, it will rotate. You can see it in any aspect any point of view. This is a great tool for teachers. This is how you can manage your students. Again, this is a screenshot. So if you look at this bar up here, when you open it up, you will see what courses have been completed. And then if you click, or what levels, I should say. If you click on a level, it will pull up this window here. And it will tell you, of course, this is me. But it will tell you what course section, what game it was. It will tell you how much time was spent on it. It will show you the student code. And um, if you want, you can go straight to there from the, to the game. There are other tabs that you can use. It's a nice snapshot of where your kids are at. And you can open that up for any level that your student has completed. 
On the, on the left here, you can see all the courses that are available. So you can click on any of those to see your roster where your kids are at. So there's a lot of flexibility to this tool. And it gives you a lot of information. This is the other way we support you. These are all downloadable PDFs. They're lesson plans and they're in some detail. They give you some uh, warm-up activities and background information on each level, or each section, I should say, and also some closing activities, and walks you through each of the levels within each section. So you can see what the students are expected to be doing and what keywords are supposed to be included, and, um, and that's what they're learning in each section. The, uh, each lesson plan also includes a, a, a summary of all the standards that are addressed. So basically we're looking at common core standards, including processing standards, and uh, NGSS standards, so you can tie it to your STEM curriculum as well as uh, we are also working with the CTS, CTS, Computer Science Teachers Association standards. They have a pretty good set of standards to guide how to um, cover everything that students need to know about uh, computing sciences. So we're working with those as well. So there are lesson plans. There's also a pacing guide. If you Again, if you want to set this up as a semester course, it gives you an idea of how long you would spend on each section. And uh, there are also student journals. These, again, can be used offline. So students can take notes and work on designs. And there are some activities associated with each section. So Nevada Ready 21 is a great way to try out these courses with your students. There are several ways you can do it. You can do it as a standalone elective course, and please contact us about this. This is something we've been working very closely with some districts on, and we can certainly help you uh, put together an elective course. Um, you can use it as a supplement to math and STEM courses. This is something I did as a teacher. I didn't have the time to teach it as a standalone course, but my students absolutely loved it as a supplement to what we were doing in math and science. And you can use it as a supplement to art courses as well, especially the design courses. And uh, also, if you're working uh, as a group with uh, teachers across the curriculum, whether it's English language arts or social studies or anything, it's a great element for project-based learning. I talked to a teacher in uh, that we worked with a couple weeks ago, and she was all set to have students create artifacts in the design program to go along with her social studies course. So there's lots of ways that these can be implemented in really any subject, especially if you're working as a teacher team. Again, for any of these, uh, please give us a, a, a holler, email, and we'd be happy to help you uh, customize it for your own needs. Okay, so this is what you get. You get semester-length courses. Originally, we started out presenting these as camps and workshops. So those were intensive uh, workshops where the students did nothing but NC Lab for two or three days. And we stretched them out. And by stretched, I don't mean water them down. I, I mean that they're paced so that they're really accessible by a large population of students. It's not just your gifted and talented group. Really, any, any student can uh, learn this the way we expanded it. Um, and that it's sequenced so that you can use it as a semester course. We provide you with lesson plans, with pacing guides, student journals, and of course, answer keys, which every teacher needs. And uh, we, these weekly competitions should be a lot of fun. This is an incentive for excellence. I think students will get uh, be thrilled to see their work on a public page. And uh, you know, when they start to see what other kids can do, I think it raises the bar. 
Um, the built-in management tools, which we, you saw under my students, this is a great way to track their progress and performance. Um, going back to this idea of semester length courses, really these work very well from junior high to high school, uh, although I use them as, um, down at the fourth grade level as well. The um, Carroll Junior is really very well matched to uh, uh, middle school, so sixth, seventh, eighth grade. The other courses require some a little more mathematical understanding, although um, I think students are so anxious to produce these designs, it's amazing how quickly they learn the math end of it. The other, um, the other thing that I like as a teacher is they re these courses really develop all the math process standards, um, whether it's uh, the logical reasoning or looking for patterns or selecting tools, uh, the collaboration. I've seen that happen really automatically and authentically when students use these courses. Okay, so I may have run those through those a little quickly, but this is, um, I'd be happy to answer any questions about this. And uh, if we have time, we can, might be able to do a little bit of a demo. Hi, this is Amy. We sure do have some time, but I do want, I wanted to um, remind people that um, with the Chromebooks and the way that NC Lab has to set up the accounts with individual emails, um, the districts have not set that up yet because they're trying to figure out, especially Clark County for right now, um, the org units and each school and dealing with the GAF and how to make sure that each license goes to that email. So there's a lot of background IT work that needs to be set up first. So you'll see when you try to sign on with your Chromebook that you won't have access yet. Um, but you will eventually, hoping to get access within a few weeks. So what I would suggest, um, is if you're a teacher on here, that you contact your district IT person um, and to see where they are with that, because some districts work differently than others. Some it's just as simple as giving them the email address and NC Lab registers it. But other districts have um, much they want much more control, and so they're doing it differently. Um, so we just appreciate your patience. So um, NC Lab won't be able to in to enroll that um, specifically for the NR21 people as of yet. Um, they're working on email addresses now. So hopefully that answered a few people's questions. Um, let me look to see if there's some more questions on here. Everything should be able to be done hopefully by the end of summer so teachers can practice all this over the summer as well. So that looks like that was mentioned. Um, but for now, I think, Sheila, maybe a few demonstrations would be great. Okay. All right. Let me switch screens here. Or maybe I have to reduce this. No. Sorry about this. We're just trying to figure out buttons here. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So this is, I'm going live now to the um, desktop. And that will give you a bit better feel for how this works. Can you see the, uh, can you see this screen okay? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so this, let's just start at the top. This is the LMS, the uh, Learning Management System. Okay, and you can see it pulls up this box here. And I am going to put on admin because this is me. And so you can see this is what I have been working on through the courses 
these are all marked here. And then if I click on one of these, it'll pull up what I wrote as a uh, program. So there I am, student code, repeat 14 go. All, all Carol was doing was going through the library 14 steps. It's the beginning of teaching how to um, uh, use a repeat command. From here, I can open the game. I can also lock it or unlock it. Now, when students take these courses, all the levels are locked until they complete a level, and then it opens up the next level. For teachers, these are all unlocked so that you can jump in and out of any level to assist your, te your students. You don't have to actually go through the whole program yourself. If I open game, it will bring up that particular screen. So let's see what Carol does here. Okay, so there's Carol in the library. There's a little storyline that goes with the program that makes it quite fun. He has to get to this home key here. So there's my very simple code. He's going to go 14 times. If I run my program, this is what's going to happen. And there he goes. And there's there's a very happy Carol who just successfully completed that level. It tells me how many steps I made, how many operations took place, how many lines of code I used, how long it uh, took me to do it. And then there's some student feedback programs on here. So if I thought, yeah, you know, I've been programming for five years. This is way too easy. Okay. Oh, I can't just say it's too easy. I actually have to give a suggestion on how to improve the game. So I would say, uh, okay, I'm going to be obnoxious here. Please make this harder. And I would send it. And that provides NC Lab with some feedback from the students themselves. If I want to watch an instructional video, I have a tab here. There's also a textbook feature that um, gives some background. This is really a, maybe a little sophisticated for some of the kids, but maybe not. Uh, it tells, again, over here what I did. There's two lines, the commands, the keywords I used were 14 go and repeat what I had to do. My goal was to finish at home. So that's, so you can go straight to the, whatever the student is working on from the learning management system. I think this is very helpful as a teacher. Okay, if I go to the courses button, let me double click on that. And you can see there's the access to all the courses. So if I click on Carol, you can see there's the five sections, or five uh, parts, I should say. And then let's say I go to um, three, OK? So now this shows me my five sections within three. If I click on this, it'll open up the section. And there are the seven levels within the section. So we'd start out here. And there's the little storyline that starts it. Carol's helping Sophia do various tasks. And this time they're decoding something. OK, and then it opens up with these really nice instructional screens. So it doesn't jump right into the games. In this case, they're showing why you would not want to write a code like this. There's a sample code. It says it has 108 lines. It's got a 17-line section that's duplicated five times. So you can take a look at that. And if you run it, it shows what's going on. There's Carol. And watch how it steps through on the left screen. It shows you exactly what command line is being used. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop this, which of course won't like fail. But that gives you an idea of, um, let's see, what do I want to do? I'm going to close that. It gives you an idea of some of the support functions. It, it really does teach the students as it goes um, so that it, they're not just launched into the game itself without any support. So that's a bit about Carol. And then if I go back to courses here, pull up Tina. 
to turtle Tina. And let's go to Tina 2. So these are the sections in Tina 2. Starts with variables, and then it talks about functions, and arcs, and solids, and surfaces. And let's see, what would be a fun one to look at? Uh, let's look at solids. OK, so let's make it, this is a simple, this is the introduction to solids. And they're just making an ice cream cone. You can see it starts off with an instructional video that they can play. Or you can play it to your class. This is a great way to open up a section is to play the video and discuss it as you go. And there's some instructional examples here and explaining how to do it, how to make the trace in the XY plane, and what the code is going to look like, and the particular command, which in this case is row solve, which means rotational solid. Um, that will actually turn it into the, the 3D shape. This is all, this is actual Python syntax. So they're no longer having their hand held with the syntax. They have to uh, write it correctly. OK, so here we go. This is our ice cream. That's the trace in the XY plane. And this is what we're going to end up with. And if I run it, and you see it's working. And it tells you how long it takes. It's receiving the data. And there's our ice cream cone. And we can manipulate that. We can zoom in. We can um, look at it from different uh, points of view. So that's a little bit about Tina. OK, and then the 3D course. Close this to the 3D course. Okay, you notice that checking for update screen. NC Lab is constantly working to improve these programs. So um, if there are, there's any updates, you will automatically get them on your, your computer, or the students can get them on theirs as well. So let's go into the welcome screen here. It explains what they're going to learn. It talks about PLASM. This is the programming language of solid modeling. And um, it talks about the 3D gallery, more details. <laughs> OK. All right. So we're going to press the play button here. And let's see what happens. OK. And you'll notice all there's only one line of code. It's, well, well, let's just see what happens here. OK, very familiar figure. This was a little routine run that was called Pac-Man. OK, so then they walk through, um, again, building elements of design. It goes from very simple to complex. This is using a steering wheel. This is a little bit of a pirate theme in the first section. And it shows you the code. And, um, and you have to fix the code to get this inner ring. So that's a little bit about this 3D programming. Um, there are a lot of options on colors. There, there's a whole library of colors. You can see, if you can see this, this one is wood. It creates a color that looks like wood. Uh, lots of fun. And again, this is a great these are what ifs. If you change the sizes of things or colors, shapes, it'll automatically display what you have changed. The other thing is, uh, the other support is when the code is correct, it will change color. You'll notice, let me make this a little bigger here. You'll notice that, um, there, that should be better here that the word ring is has changed color. And that means the code is correct. If it's misspelled or not capitalized, it will not change color. So this is another prompt for the students to get the code correct. Okay, let's see here. So we'll pause and let's reduce that. OK, so this, this tells you that that's a little introduction to the courses.
again. Oh, I have to close the level first. There, and now it's happy. All right, this is my favorite part here. This is Creative Suite, because this is where the, uh, the students get to create their own games and they do their own modeling. So in the programming, if I hit the programming button, you can see that you can build, you can write Python programs, Carol programs, Turtle Tina programs. Um, they can even work on Java. Get that bigger. I'm going to go to Carol. And it opens up with the game, but um, from there they can design their own games using the designer tool. And you can see there's all kinds of things they can use to create objects and barriers and um, things to pick up, uh, containers to put things in. There's all kinds of tools that they can use. They can create a game that is run manually or that someone has to type code in in order to complete. In the game window, they um, add uh, the storylines, the instructions, and so forth to make it a true game. No, I'm not going to save file. Also within Creative Suite, open that up again. This is your 3D modeling, the plasm, and that opens up a modeling screen. Looks very much like the instructional levels, and this is where they can write their own programs and save them. The files can be exported so that they can actually be printed on a 3D printer. This is what this line of code, or uh, set of code, produces if I run it. And there you have it. A cube with cylindrical holes cut through it. Uh, we, what we often do is add a sphere in the middle. It's really neat to see that uh, when it's printed out because the sphere can rotate within this cube. It's, it's a fun object to create. Okay. Um, one thing you, you notice here is that each axis is color-coded. That makes it a little easier for students to orient themselves, especially when they're first working in three dimensions. The x-axis is always red, the z-axis is blue, and the y-axis is green. All right, and finally, this is the file storage down here. So you can see I've created a bunch of files when I was working with this, and I can just click on those and open them up at any time. So I have files. I can organize them into different folders. You can do this, and your students can do it as well. OK, so let me go back to, all right. So, any questions about the desktop? Great. Um, I don't see any more questions, but that was um, a really good review. I really like the Pac-Man. Isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah. It's like there's a lot of fun stuff on here that you have to explore, and and um, I and I know it's a little frustrating for teachers and staff and coaches right now because there's not access to get in to it at, right now um, but I just want you guys to know they're they're configuring and working on that so it all the teachers should have access before the end of the school year so they can play with it and then once that access is given then they will be able to contact you guys directly for help and navigation um, over the summer um, yeah, so do you have a slide, I know it's on my closing slide, Sheila, of uh, the contact information. Um, I don't know if you put it on your slide. Yes, well. there it is. Here, let me reduce that and let's bring that okay. up. Okay, there you go. Great, so once, uh, take a screenshot of that or write that down so when you guys are able to get in and navigate and you need support questions, um, that is where you would go as well. So I think what I'll do is I'll switch back and just um, 
go ahead and do the closing. Thank you, Sheila. Um, this was a great introductory. There's a lot of information, so it's probably a little overwhelming in the beginning. I know it is for me. <laughs> yeah, it always is, isn't it? And thank you, Amy. Yeah. Let's see. Let me get to the screen I want. All right. So thank you, Sheila, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar, Introduction to NC Lab. Um, so if you have any questions, you can contact me, um, as well as you can see that on the screen, or contact Sheila and NC Lab as well. Um, let me get through this final slide. There we go. And if you, if you wouldn't mind, there's going to be a feedback form that's going to pop up if you could fill that out complete it and provide your feedback. Um, it's for NR21 program um, for the evaluators um, as well as input for us and how we can make things better. Um, we would also like to invite you to upcoming webinars so you can click on that webinar link. You can also find that on our CTL website as well. And just so you know that all of these webinars are being recorded so at any time you can go in there and register and listen to those because we know not all of these times are um, the most ideal times for teachers. You will also receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view or recordings of today's webinar. Of course, I just did that. Um, so um, at this time, if there's no other questions, I don't see any more. Let me double check. I think what we will do is um, go ahead and close this webinar out, and you have all the information. So we thank you for joining us today. And have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you.